Nautilus, Captain Midnight. At last, he meets Ivan Shark in a gigantic air battle. After luring the master criminal and his men to his Nevada ranch, Midnight engages him in the sky. But ill luck pursues him, and Shark appears victorious. Nobody could come out of that wash out and live. Shut up, Killjoy. He's come out of worse than this. You say what did I tell you? Come on, Captain, snap out of it. Oh! Well, snap into it. I found the car. I thought you was a goner. Yeah, so did I. Did you manage to hold any of those men? I'll say we did. All of them. They're tied up like chickens, ready for you to cut their heads off. Oh, yeah? Look. Tied them up. What with? Spider webs? Well, don't blame me. You help me. Never mind, boys. Help me to the shop. We'll radio Major Steele. He may be able to have them rounded up. Hey, we're taking chances staying on the highway. You better take a side road. Nothing doing. The chief will see us. He'll contact us. Don't worry. There. What'd I tell you? Chief, all right, he spotted us. He signaled he's going to land on that field. You better get over there, Smith. That was great work, Chief. You sure polished off Captain Midnight. Yes, he got up and walked out of the wreck while you incompetent louts were driving away. But he crashed. We heard it. He must have been killed. Shut up. He's alive, I tell you. What about my daughter? Well, I was coming to that. They tricked us. She never was with him. That little guy must have dressed up in her clothes. Shut up, all of you. Let me do the talking. Howdy, gents. What's Hello, how are you? My name's Jason. I'm constable of this county. I just got a flash about a gang of men on the loose. Chairman an airplane, too, with machine guns popping. Wow. Really? Oh. Looks like you've got some explaining to do, mister. <laughs> Boys, it looks as though we were suspected. <laughs> I'm sure we're in the clear, Constable. There's my ship at your service. Step in and look her over. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's just what I aim to do. Well, Constable, did you find anything? Give me a chance. I haven't taken a good look yet. Take him. Hey. What is this? We recognize no law but our own. Number seven, take him inside. I have a plan to use him to our advantage. You ought to stay and watch. All right, get moving. All right, get him out of his clothes. Hurry. You don't mean you're going you to... You guessed it. I'm going to assume a new personality. But that's impossible. Look at the pouch he's got. Wait till you see the pouch I have. My pad will take care of that. Now do as you're told. All right, mister. Start peeling. See here, man. You're flirting with dynamite. I'm the law. All right. All right, Grandpa. Just get out of him. Here, put these on him. Now, 
wonder what he has in mind. Don't worry. We'll find out soon enough. Hey, you, turn around. Turn around. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, Martell, what's the verdict? Marvelous, boss. Why, you ain't you, you're him. Well, what about the voice? Listen to this. My name's Jason. I'm constable of this county. What you're doing isn't legal. You'll be punished. Shut up. Thanks a million, Major. I'll wait till the plane arrives and report to you in person. Be sure and guard Edwards and his daughter. All right, signing off. Major Steele reports all highways and every known landing field are covered. It may bring results. Yeah, that's just dandy, but uh, what are we going to do to help? There's a plane on its way here to pick us up. We'll make our plans on the way back. Don't let him get away. Lift them high, you cutthroats. I'll blast the first one that hesitates. Lift them higher. Don't shoot, Constable. We'll give up. <laughs> Put them down, you fools. I was just checking on this makeup. Why, boss? It's you! You fooled us again. Certainly. If it fools my own men, it should be good enough. Boy, I say it will. Get your orders from Martell. Stop him! Hey, Stop him! You'll pay for this! Get him to the car. We've got a long way ahead of us. What's that? See who it is. I wouldn't know, but he's got a great big star on his vest. The local talent, I'll bet. Well, open up for the law, Chuck. I'll get to the point pronto. My name's Jason. I'm constable of these parts. I'm here on official business. What's your name? Albright. Captain Albright. You couldn't be Captain Midnight, too, now could you? Well, I... Don't deny it! I've got your figure. You, are you kidding? Say, you better leave that gun alone, Mr. Constable. You'll force us to hurt you. Quiet, boys, quiet. He's only doing his duty. I'm not denying that I am sometimes known as Captain Midnight. What do you want of me? I don't want nothing, but Los Angeles does. You're wanted for murder. Will you come peaceful, or do I get tough? Of all the crazy golden loose. Say the word, Captain, we'll toss him out. Good. Don't say nothing or I'll blast you down. Don't worry, Constable, I can handle them. I'll go with you. I'm anxious to go. Now you're showing good sense. Get to the car. Oh, uh, don't worry, boys. I know what I'm doing. Contact Major Steele and tell him what happened. I'll be at the... The county seat. Get going. Everything went right. He ought to be along any minute now. Yeah, if it went right. But suppose it didn't. We're waiting here like a bunch of pigeons, ready to be picked off. Let's grab the plane and beat it. Ah, oh, forget it, Gloomy. The chief won't miss. You're a brave man, Constable, taking me in all alone. I'm not alone. The law's on my side. And six little helpers in this. But uh, you wouldn't use it. What makes you think I wouldn't? Because you'd be killing the only man who knows where your daughter is hidden. <laughs> I didn't think you'd shoot. Your makeup is excellent, but you made one mistake. That ring on your finger. You had it on when your helper was killed and tried to pin it on me. Then you were a convincing old man. Admitting all that, so what? Your uh, aptness at disguises intrigues me. I'm anxious to learn your real identity. It doesn't matter. You're my prisoner and you'll remain that way. At least I now know your real voice. Wouldn't it be better to stop, get off the road? Perhaps we can reach a compromise. Now you're beginning to be sensible. I'll deal. On your toes, boys. Here comes the boss. 
What do you turn off the road for? How do I know? Wait and see. Now, tell me where my daughter is and I'll call a truce. Long enough for you to make a getaway. That's fair enough. But first, I must know who I'm dealing with. You're in no position to demand anything. Do as I say or I'll finish her here. Grab him, man! We better get over there. I'm no good. I'm wounded. Well, stay here, then. Hold it! That's far enough. One false move and I'll let you have it. I'm taking this man in with me. You want to come in on the side of the law, now's your last chance. Well, You seem know. a little uncertain. All right, I'll take this man. Get up! I can't, I'm hurt! What are you going to do with me? I'll wait and see. Oh! Get him to the plane. We've got to find out where Fury is. Martel, take the other car with Slick. Return to the workshop. Tear it apart if necessary, but find that model of Edward's rangefinder. Hey, we're going back to Albright's place to get Edward's model at Chief's orders. Have operatives stand by and report to me if anything develops. Yes, sir. Surely there's something we can do besides that. Captain Albright may even now be dead at the hands of that gang. We have no proof that they have him. All we know is that Constable Jason's office had no warrant for him. And they both disappeared into thin air. Yes? Dr. Jordan phoning from the Edwards home, sir. Says it's important. Uh, put him on. Oh, that's my father's doctor. This is Major Steele speaking. Stop it! Why don't you leave me alone? Hello, Major. I know I'm disobeying orders, but we're in a ticklish situation. Edwards has taken a turn for the worse. That's bad news, Doctor, and we'll do anything you suggest to help. He's been raving again, calling for his daughter. Goodbye. What is it? What happened? The, the doctor says your father is worse. Oh. He's calling for you. And our only chance is for you to go to him. Of course, I'll go at once. Wait, it's risky. And we'll have to send some men with you. Well, then hurry. S1 calling number eight at headquarters. Hurry. Boss, he's skin you alive. Oh, shut up. Number eight answering. Come in, S1. At last you answer. Have you located my daughter yet? No luck yet. Our men are watching every likely place. Anything else? Come in. We discovered that Edwards is at his home. Lost his memory. Number 12 is on a job. Come in. A needless procedure. If Edwards has lost his memory, he's of no value to us. Recall number 12. Wait, Chief. Number 12 reports that Edwards' daughter is on her way over there. What now? Come in. Good. Take help. Go over there and get that girl. Answer. But that means battling government men. Not so hot. Government men or not, do as I say. Go over there and get that Edwards girl. S1 signing off. You better hurry. Do a good job or boss he go. Oh, quiet, Fang. I know what he'll do, but I don't have to like it. <laughs> See here, Shark. Counterman that order about the Edwards girl, and I'll tell you where to find your daughter. Too late. With the girl in my hands, I can make my own terms. I may dispense with you entirely. I haven't decided yet. But listen to reason. I don't want to talk about it. If you want to live, don't try to get to these controls. I'm taking the ship down. One step forward and we all crash together.
Wayne. Their lives are at stake, and now they're being obstructed by the local constable. Can Chuck and Icky get away in time? And what about the inventor, Edwards? Is he still suspicious of the friends who seek to aid him? You can't afford to miss The Hidden Bomb, next week's thrill-packed chapter of Captain Midnight.